Hello everybody, this is Antonia and in this video we're gonna code a little bit. I think it's due time to do some coding on this channel. Last time it was years ago when I first showed how to make a Figma plugin just when they got released. Since then I created a couple of plugins that I shared with community. I also did a couple of plugins for my work that is internal plugins so it's not shared on community. And all in all, I think Figma plugins can unleash your raw potential if you decide to learn a little bit of coding. One of those you might already saw, Icon Grid Maker, it's quite popular I would say. It has over five and a half thousand downloads and I have a video that explains how to use it but this is not about this plugin. In this video I want to focus on how to create a plugin using Swelt as a front-end JavaScript library. Coding Figma plugins in vanilla JS can be fun, but you can pretty quickly hit a wall because you start to write this spaghetti code and you have so much lines just to achieve a single very small thing. So I think using front-end framework is really a necessity if you want to build a robust plugin or just want to be quick. A little preface, this is not for total beginners like designers that never really tried to code anything in their life, but I still recommend you to watch this through because you will see how simple it is to create a little utility plugin that will save you so much time and maybe you will get inspired to you know, check a little bit JavaScript, HTML, CSS and see how that works. I will leave you some links uh, so you can get started if you didn't already. And also I want to encourage you by saying I am not a good developer. Back in the day I might have been like decent, but in the last couple of years I don't think I spent more than like 20 hours developing something because in my day design job I don't code. I coded a little bit for this internal plugin that I mentioned. But outside work, in my free time, I'm preoccupied with this channel and also my podcast design party and, and I have hobbies, so I don't really have time to hone my developer skills. But this is actually not a problem, because if you understand the core concepts, then you can code pretty much anything you want. Of course, there is a caveat, not anything you want. You can't create like new Figma from scratch, but you can create these Figma plugins, little utility programs, that can boost your productivity, save you hours and just stop you from doing this repetitive stupid work that just drains you while you should be focusing on real problems, like real design problems to solve. The mission of this video is to create a little plugin that will search and replace text. Now you might say, hey Antonia, but Figma just released a native search and replace functionality. And I say, yes, good for Figma, but not all features are tailored for everybody. This feature that they released is not good for my workflow, plain and simple. Sometimes I just want to change text in one single frame and this new Figma feature does not allow you to do that. You can either change text in whole page or in whole document, not really optimal, but it's very easy to create find and replace like search text and then replace it with a new value plugin. So I'm going to show you how to do that using Svelte frontend framework. It's super easy, super fun. So let's get cracking. Before we actually start with coding, let's check two GitHub repositories. First one is actually a starter kit for developing Figma plugins with Svelte. We don't have to do any configuration. It's already done for us. And the second thing is Figma design system that's already embedded in our Svelte starter kit. So our app will actually look like Figma itself. So let's go back to our main repository and copy this line. Next thing, let's open our terminal and paste it, but we want to change name. Let's call it Figma replace. Then let's install all of our dependencies, you know the drill. And then let's run it. Uh, 
and this is all that we need from terminal right now our code is running and it's time to open our code editor of choice i'm using vs code let's navigate to our code and this is what you see right now we want to first zoom in so you can see this is a boilerplate code but we don't need that so I'm gonna fast forward a little bit and clean up my files. Alright now I deleted all boilerplate code and you need to pay attention to two things. One file is code TS and the other is plugin UI Svelte. These are the only two files you really need to worry about. CodeTS is actually a file that interacts with Figma API and this is basically just the UI of our plugin. I already prepared this plugin before I started to record this because I want to show you what we are building. So it's a little box over here, little utility plugin with two inputs and one button. First field is for searching existing text and then the second field is for a new value and then this button triggers the code. Very easy, right? So let's quickly run this plugin to see what the end result should look like. And that's it. So let's start with coding, but before writing any serious code, we need to go to this manifest.json file and just change name. Let's call it better replace with big R. And then we're just gonna quickly import this plugin so we can test it. There, it's over here. Okay, we don't need Figma for the time being and we want to focus first on this plugin UI. I already pre-wrote the code. It's quite simple, so we have one div and two inputs and then one button. So first thing we need to do is create a few variables. So, sir, wait a second, this is, has a typo. Lol, it's incredible how many typos I create. And then we need another one with new text. There you go. That handles inputs, but now we need the function that will do the magic. I already have my function prepared over here. So basically what it does is it uses a little bit of Figma API to post message or send some code to code, not code JS, but code TS file. That's important to know. And it's just sending an object with some key value pairs. This one I will explain a bit later. And this is basically a variable that holds my search text that has also typos, love that. And then new text, basically whatever is the new value that we want to change to. And just for convenience a little bit, we are cleaning the inputs so we can do another replacing faster. I also prepared a little bit of styles over here so it looks exactly how I want. I will share my repository with you so you can inspect all of this a little bit closer and at your own pace. Now we need to go to CodeTS and actually write the magic. This function over here is very crucial. Every Figma plugin has this piece of code. What it does is it's getting a message from your UI. So basically every time you use this code, it will trigger everything that's inside of on message function. Just a piece of advice, if you're developing something, you might have more than one button and you don't want it to run everything that happens inside of this function. So first we're gonna check what's the message type or we can call this action to make it even simpler. But then we also need to change this code over here. We want to 
replace text. So if we expand our plugin later, we can just keep adding if clauses or you can use switch or whatever else you find better. Now what we want to fetch is whatever user selected, basically frames. And then we want to iterate selected frame for each node. Everything in Figma is basically a node of different type, a frame, text, and so on. And now that we are checking every hour selected frame, it can be one or more or even zero. Okay, now what we want to do is get a hold of all text layers that match a certain condition. Okay, now we can see better. So I'm storing in variable text nodes all nodes that are of type text, so basically text layers, and value of that node, so this thing over here, your text, needs to be the same as our first input or search text. This is another typo, love that. Okay, now it's better. And then we want to actually manipulate with each text node. So text nodes for each node, fat arrow function. And one thing to keep in mind is Figma requires you to load fonts first. So let's load fonts, Figma load font async and the font information is actually in node font name property the amount of typos am i right okay now our code is valid and now that we have our fonts loaded figma will not generate any errors so we want to change the value so we already know about this character's property. And we want to change with whatever is in new text. That's this one. And just to be nice, we will put a little toast that will say text replaced. You can use Figma notify function for that. There you go. Another thing we need to change is this box for our interface. It should be something like this. And I think we are ready to test this. Okay. This is our little utility. It looks good. Let's see if it works. And it works, it's perfect. So we can select even more frames. Let's see if it works with more frames, it should. Yes, it nicely changes everything. Next thing we want to check is how to expand our plugin. So for example, what happens if I don't select anything? Do I see some error like select frame first or do it just automatically change everything that is in this page this is up for you to decide here is another idea for improvement let's say i want to change all hellos to highs but now only this value change and that's because we need to match case with string value and we might add a little switch over here so it looks for every hello not just the one that is spelled with small h or only big h. With that, let's talk about next steps. So what's next? Uh, I'm gonna publish this plugin. Publishing is quite trivial. You literally go to plugins, publish, blah, blah, blah. It's just next, 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 nothing too hard. But I intend to share link to repository of this plugin. So you're free to just fork it, make something even better and release it under your name or you can even make a PR and we can make this together better plugin. Of course, I will mention you as a contributor. You don't have to worry about that. 
I really hope you like this video. Any feedback, any comment, please write down there in comment section. And if you haven't already, please subscribe because that inspires me to make more videos, to be quite honest with you. That's all and until next time, ciao!